Hey YouTube, how's it going? It's Red Sail Gorilla again. Again, yeah, I'm a, like I said, real life person, and I keep on doing that because the ACR serial number is on the other side. And pardon my dogs being morons back here. I'm sure they'll be in and out. Good dog. <laughs> All right, guys, so I'm going to finally get to it, right? 3-21.8, 3-21.8, right? For you older folks, it's FM7-8, right? So we're looking at ATP 3-21.8. Finally getting into the meat and potatoes of this. You guys already saw some of the strategy stuff, right? So it's kind of sort of tentative piece right now. You guys know what you should be prepping, should be doing. Get some food. Get all that stuff. What's going on, big guy? Stupid. He's a good dog, though. Uh, so, yeah, let's get into 3-21.8. The infantry, platoon, and squad, right, for rifle. Uh, it really covers just about everything now. I used to the old 7-8. Didn't have a lot of vehicle stuff. The, the old one, right? The old one didn't have... Uh, your strikers didn't have your Bradleys. I guess what the new one does. So we've got your mech warriors that are out there, whether they are on track or wheeled. So be able to go through that. But right now we're going to go over organization. I think organization needs to come first, and we're going to do organization in three parts. This is going to be the first part of organization, and we're talking about regular infantry. ATP 3-21.8. We're not going to get into 31-21 quite yet for the special warfare guys and then what I think is going to end up being the red cell gorilla guys out here which I think should be very close to special forces right because special forces are the professional gorilla force of the United States right they are that force multiplier where hey we're going to go do gorilla things and show gorillas how to gorilla well, let's break down the regular service forces first. Your regular guys are probably going to, let's start big in platoon. A platoon is going to be made up of four squads. It's going to have a platoon leader, and it's going to have the platoon daddy, which your platoon sergeant. It's also going to have probably one RTO, radio telephone operator, if you've got one, and probably one or two medics assigned to that specific platoon. Right? If there are three to four medics in a company, then one is probably helping out each platoon. If there are eight, then two are helping out each platoon. Right? As a someone who knows more about medical, then let's stop the bleed and then get them out of there. All right, so let's break down the first three squads, and then we'll break down the weapon squad. The first three squads are probably going to be a squad leader. And then you're going to have two team leaders, Alpha and Bravo team. Within those two teams are going to be one rifleman, who's probably going to be an AT4 gunner. You're probably going to have a saw gunner, squad automatic weapon specialist, or something very similar, right? I think in the Marines, they, they did away with the saw and went to an automatic version of the M4 that has a longer, heavier barrel, right? Which is probably what a gorilla is going to be looking forward to because... Saws are expensive, you know, 10 grand for one, that's a single shot. Let's not do that, right? Let's appropriate those as we go along. All right, so we're going to do that. And then you're going to have your grenadier, which is it possible for a gorilla to have a grenadier? Yeah, you know, do you do you, buddy. And I would say that it is quite possible, especially with FBM technology is, is getting very, very high up there, and you go buy some, some good, solid steel pipes from Lowe's, and you can probably make an okay 37 millimeter signaling device. Don't ask me how I know. So with that technology, yeah, sure, maybe you can do that. All right, so that is your, your 9, 12, 13. Well, who are those other guys? Well, they come off of Weapon Squad. Weapon Squad has a similar makeup. You do have a squad leader, the Weasel, the Weapon Squad leader, who doesn't like being called the Weasel. And then you're probably going to have three-ish machine gun teams, 
and a couple of guys who specialize in either man pad shoulder fired munitions. So we're, we're shooting at something in the sky, right? So you're stinger missile specialist or your man portable shoulder fired munition that are anti-tank, right? Not necessarily AT4, right? Like I said earlier, the rifleman, if you guys have the ability to give him that extra bit of oomph, usually in the infantry, we would say, hey, here's the rifleman. He's not really carrying that much. He becomes your AT4 gunner, right? So that's an unguided munition. So for a guided munition, you want somebody who kind of knows exactly what they're doing with that. And for the javelin, we would have, that would be our infantry to tank. Let's take out these tanks, right? Because infantry doesn't do any good against armor, right? Not, not in and of itself. But let's have a guy who's a shoulder-mounted munition specialist who can take out a tank. Or let's have a shoulder-mounted munition specialist who can take out air. Because Stinger missiles will fuck up an airplane all day long, and Stinger missiles will fuck up helicopters all day long. That's what you want, right? So, if you are lucky in your squad, you're going to have a medium machine gunner as well, who's coming out of weapon squad. That's why there's three of them in the weapon squad. So, one, two, three regular infantry squads, and then your weapon squad. So, we have one, two, three medium machine gunners that are going to each squad. They are not organic to that squad, but they are going to be an attachment to that squad or a detachment from weapon squad, right? Unless there's a whole platoon, uh, unless there's a whole platoon mission going on, then the weasel probably is going to go with his favorite gunner, right? Or he's going to head up the support by fire if there is a platoon mission, like a platoon raid, right? A platoon ambush is not necessarily a platoon ambush with an entire platoon. Usually how that gets sectioned off is we have our main mission for ambush, and then to the left and to the right as security, we'll have another two ambushes, right? We know that they we know that the enemy comes by in threes, let's say, right? And they have their first convoy, well, we're gonna let them go on through. Then they have their second convoy, well, we're gonna let them go on through. Here comes their third convoy. Well, the far, uh, the far right security guys. Oh, okay, those are the guys we need to take out, right? Or, you know, your middle group. We take out number two, and your your far left side. We take out number one, right? So that's the that's how you do an area ambush. Is you really have just you split up your platoon into three different squads, messing up three different ambushes. So that's an area ambush, right? Well, we won't get into ambush too much. So, yeah, that's that's how you go. So who are the other guys if it's now 10 because we have a medium machine gunner? Well, machine guns usually come in teams. So you're going to have a medium machine gunner, and then you're going to either have your uh, assistant gunner, who is more experienced than the gunner, right? The assistant gunner is usually someone who's been a machine gunner before, and they know exactly what we're supposed to be shooting at, what our targets are supposed to be shooting at, and the machine gunner is usually a nug who I would say is strong enough to carry it. Usually a small guy, right? Because platoon sergeants like picking on the small guys. I don't know why. I'll send them to the weapon squad. Small guy will have a big giant fucking gun and start, you know, screwing up the enemy's day. But then you have someone who is a little bit more specialized than him. Uh, maybe a specialist in charge of a private first class. Who knows, hey man, this is how I use the gun. We're going to do this as a machine gun team. I'll do the reloads. All you have to do is focus on doing your lift, getting everything out of the way whenever you're, you're pushing the, you know, going to reload the machine gun, making sure that thing doesn't blow up in our face. And I mean the ammunition, not necessarily gun itself, right? And as the assistant gunner, I'm telling you where to shoot. And I reload it for you. And I do the barrel changes, right? So I'm the one doing the time. I'm kind of sort of really the one controlling the gun, unless we're on an objective that then the uh, patrol leader or the squad leader or whoever is supposed to be really taking care of it, unless they're on assault, is taking care of that gun, right? Uh, so yeah, there's that. And then if you're extremely lucky, you might have an ammo bearer. Right? And then, as I said, one of those man pad munition specialists, one of those shoulder fire mounted munition specialists, is also going to be there. Right? So, those guys are going to be the inorganic attachments 
to a squad. They're going to be detached from the weapon squad, and they're going to be put onto one of the line squads. So either one, two, or three. That's really how platoon organization works. And a company is typically just going to be three to four platoons. I say three to four because that last platoon may or may not exist. Uh, I've seen a lot of times, especially in heavy, like in, in armor, that last platoon doesn't really exist. You don't have time for them. Uh, you don't have enough people for them. But in light, yeah, sometimes it's sometimes it's it's four platoons. Not usually. Usually it's just three and then a headquarters, right? So you'll you'll have a head a whole headquarters platoon. That'll be your fourth company, or sorry, your fourth platoon within the company, right? Your fourth platoon within the company. So yeah, that's that's it for organization. I'll probably put up some you know some spread up here for you guys to see. But the organization is really simple. But it's also really big. Do I think that gorillas are going to have that kind of organization? Yeah, sure, there's maybe a couple of them there. But if you actually want to keep folks from finding out who you are or they're, you know, an agent that is pushing some weird shit like kidnapping a, kidnapping a governor or kidnapping a mayor or whatever, right? Which, yes, I get it, as Red Cell, as, as gorillas. That is white cell, and we are trying to, to take that element out, but we're not kidnapping that element. There's no reason to. It's too dangerous to kidnap that element. What are you, you going to do with the, with that person after after you kidnap them, right? Take them out from a distance, and you've made your point. Oh, okay, cool, right? Get out of here. Anybody else who's white cell, get out of here. We want you gone, right? And anybody who's blue for who decides to take I, I, I get it. That's That's bad stuff. Right? It's bad. It's against the law. But it's one of those things where it's only treason if you lose. Right? It's only a, a super bad deal if you're losing. And as gorillas, you want to keep those engagements very, very small and not become decisively engaged. Right? You don't want to become decisively engaged with the army or with the police if you don't have to be. Right? So do your best to not be decisively engaged with those elements. Next week, we're going to go over the special warfare elements, but for now, we're going to end transmission.